Hello everyone, my name is Kirkwood Hines. I'm an applications engineer with Hawkridge Systems. And today I'd like to show you SolidWorks event-based motion. It's a tool that comes with SolidWorks simulation professional and above. Um, and it's part of the motion simulation suite. And what it allows us to do is create motion studies where certain events like forces, mates, or motion is triggered um, not just by keyframes in our timeline, but by the actual events happening um, in our simulation. So for example, you can have proximity sensors set up if you're trying to simulate, say, a photo eye. Uh, or you can just have events triggered by other events wrapping up. So if you have a long series of chained events, it works really well for that. So the simulation I'm working on is this marble raceway. So I'll just play my simulation or what I have for it right now. And I have these marbles that are rolling down the track going through all these obstacles and when they get to the bottom I have an elevator that's gonna bring them back up to the top push off the next one and go back down so because of the complexity of these events uh, the marbles don't necessarily get to the bottom of the track at the same time every single time I run the simulation so it would really be difficult for me to continuously change uh, the time frame for that elevator to raise, for the pusher to activate, uh, just using key frames uh, within my simulation. So again, instead, I've used SolidWorks event-based motion to help me out here. So to get to the event-based motion tools, you need to be in a motion study. So I have my SolidWorks motion turned on in my office products. And I'm in a motion analysis over here within my motion study. And then tucked away on the right side, we have our SOLIDWORKS event-based motion tools. So all these are are certain tasks uh, that we bring about by using triggers. So these can be our sensors, like proximity sensors, again, to simulate something like a photo eye, or other tasks um, finishing. So as soon as our task 2 finishes, which is raising the elevator, uh, we start the pusher. and each of these tasks or triggers activates an action so whether that be our elevator raising up using this linear motor uh, or rotating the flipper to prevent the next ball um, from rolling too far along the track so let's check out one of these sensors just so you guys know uh, how it's set up so I'll just scroll to the beginning of my timeline so everything's in place so the sensors are set up uh, within your assembly tree. Here's my proximity sensor within the sensors folder. I'll just edit this really quick. And there we have our property manager. So it's a proximity sensor set up on the face, the bottom face of the lift. We have an indication of where it's at right here. And it's just keeping an eye on marble 3 and marble 2 and watching for them to be one millimeter away from the sensor. So as soon as that's activated, as soon as one of the marbles lands on this pad, it raises up. Once it's at the top of its stroke, uh, we begin the pushing process. So one quick note about the linear motors or angular motors you're using in event-based motion. They have to be set up as servo motors. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll just edit one of my motors over here. So I've just based it on a face, given it a direction with an edge, and then used the servo motor from, from this list. And it's being driven by a displacement. So in my value, I've just keyed in the distance I want it to raise before it stops and the amount of time I want that motion to take. And then using the profile, you can adjust um, how fast or the deceleration or acceleration of that motion. And because it's event based, I haven't had to worry about when this is occurring. It's going to figure that out as I simulate the events. Over here on the right, it gives me a diagram of how these events are chained together. So these blue lines indicating uh, that two events are connected. And so that's allowed me to um, build this raceway, make little tweaks, and not worry about when events are being triggered uh, within my analysis. So that's a little bit about SOLIDWORKS event-based motion. 
Uh, I hope you found this video useful. For more tricks and tips like this, please subscribe to the Hawk Ridge Systems YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.